Hi, I'm Kevin Borland. I'm a music producer, a guitarist, and a lawyer. I'm going to tell you about an ongoing culinary adventure I embarked on last summer, and I encourage you to join me. Not just by watching my videos, but try it in your city. My quest began Monday, July 25, 2016, when I set out to cycle through the world's 206 ethnic cuisines on my lunch breaks. I called it the No Repeat Nationality Workday Lunch Challenge. In the previous episodes, I sampled 134 ethnic cuisines, mostly in and around the Washington, D.C. metro area. In this 19th episode, I'm going to sample the cuisines of Bahrain, Nagorno-Karabakh, South Ossetia, and Panama. Today I'm headed to K Street. I'm going to try some food from Bahrain. Uh, I'm going to try chicken biryani, which I understand did not originate there, but in India, but it's one of the most popularly eaten foods there in uh, Bahrain. I'm at the uh, Mayor Kebab House, and it looks really nice in here, but I've got to take it to go. I've got to get back to work. Similar to the chicken makhus I tried, but it's not the same. Bites are different. Today I'm going to try Tanov Afor, which is a soup from Nagorno-Karabakh, which is a breakaway state from the Soviet Union that is uh, uh, on the borders of Azerbaijan and Armenia in the Caucasus, and it's a yogurt-based soup. This is a good soup, and it's really like no soup I've ever had. The consistency is um, lumpy because <laughs> it has you know whole grains in there, and it's got uh, you know the mint really tastes good with the yogurt. And I know mint and yogurt. It's no surprise it's going to taste good. I mean, there's a lot of mint and yogurt combinations out there that. But as a soup, it, it, it's a good soup, and it's not like any soup I've ever had. And after sampling it, when I cooked it last night, I still have plenty to take to work today for lunch. The recipe said serve immediately um, after I cooked it, so I was worried about bringing it in today and, and reheating it, that it might not um, have the same consistency or something that I would actually say. I mixed it, of course, a couple times while I was uh, reheating it, but I'd say it's a little better the next day. So it's 9 o'clock at night, and I think this is going to be the latest lunch I've ever had. Uh, I'm cooking it myself here at home, and the country is South Ossetia, and I lose, use the term country lightly. It's a breakaway republic in the Caucasus. Uh, and I'm still in the prep stage, even at this, this time of night. Uh, I'm going to turn the camera around. I'll show you, show you uh, what I've done so far. So the dish contains of uh, three elements, basically. The meatball, the hard-boiled eggs, and a sauce. And the hard-boiled eggs are well on the way to being hard-boiled. Uh, they're already boiled and they're hardening, and then I've got to cool them. Uh, the meatballs are pretty close to being prepared. I got to roll them, but the ingredients are all combined. Uh, the spices you saw on the, on the counter were for the sauce, as was the uh, butter and flour, and the bread is being soaked in milk to absorb the uh, milk to go into the meatballs as well. Now I've got it down to the three elements. I got the hard boiled eggs hard boiled, I've got the meatballs ready to be put into balls, and I've got the sauce ready to go. Uh, so then I guess I'm going to bake it after that. If there was an award so far for the country that used the most conventional ingredients in the most unusual way, I will give that award to the people of South Ossetia. 
These are all ingredients that were easily in my kitchen already. I didn't have to even go out and buy anything. And yet, the smell is strange, but good. It looks strange. It's completely exotic. And uh, I expect it's probably gonna taste really good. I mean, about three hours of cook and prep time coming to its conclusion here. It in fact is incredibly good. For the recommendation of a co-worker, today I'm headed to uh, Georgia Avenue to try some food at a restaurant uh, called es Esencias Panameñas, food from Panama. I had to take uh, the food to go just because I was a little scared of getting a party ticket there. I couldn't find a legal spot during rush hour and I was kind of illegally parked. So uh, let's take a look and see what we got. I ordered the uh, carne manolas, which are like stuffed taros. And I think they're like taro meat pies. And I ordered the plato typico, which is like the typical, a typical plate. Uh, something that commonly eaten in Panama. And this looks like really beautifully prepared. Let's start with the meat pies. And that's a sauce, dipping sauce. Cameron dipping sauce. delicious, but what's interesting is uh, the tamarind sauce I wasn't expecting because that's uh, really popular in like India. And I wonder if that has something to do with the fact that the uh, Panama Canal is of course in Panama. Mm. Beef inside. Delicious. <laughs> All right, I'll get back to those in a minute. Next, what looks like the saffron arroz con pollo. Some potato salad with beets. Nice little salad. Some plantains. Be my second course. Arroz con pollo. Try the beet potato salad. Bright pink. Very good. And the plantains, soft. Sweet like dessert. This is probably the best tamale I've ever had. Mm. This has capers in it. Now that's capers. Mm. Well, I'm definitely going back there in my free time sometime uh, for dinner. Looks like a nice place to sit down to and enjoy your meal. I guess this uh, officially puts me two-thirds through my journey, though. I'm going to post new episodes every Thursday night on YouTube and on my Facebook fan page until I complete my journey. Be sure to tune in next Thursday when I sample food from Northern Europe. I also encourage you to either subscribe to my YouTube channel 
or like my Facebook page or both. If you do, you'll get to hear a lot of my music and keep tabs on some of the other interesting projects I'm working on. And also, sharing is caring. <laughs>